ask the first question with Kyle. Patrick, go ahead. Hey, Kyle. Um, can you just put into, from your perspective, the importance of the one, two, three double play? Because to me, that was, that was a big key, certainly for your side of the performance. Yeah, um, I mean, no one wants to be put into a bases loaded jam like that, um, especially with a veteran hitter like Zimmerman up. Uh, but you know, me, me and Diaz kind of stayed stayed on track and and were, was able to you know get him off balance early with a with a curveball swing and miss, and we backed it right up. You know, we we saw it wasn't a great swing of his, so we backed it right up with a, with another curveball, and he uh, once again didn't take a very good swing on it. Um, you know, the, the whole time you know, leading up to that, I was in my mind was, you know, try and get a comebacker to yourself so I can, you know, keep a run off the board, get a double play, and, you know, give my chance, give myself a really good chance to get out of this inning. And, you know, thankfully we were able to do that. Um, I've sort of asked you this through the years, uh, but as you've developed all of your pitches, the various pitches, how much more proficient are you at being able to get a feel or, a knowledge about what's working on a particular day. For instance, I heard you tell the TV crew that your two seamer was good because the situation was right, the humidity, et cetera. How much better have you gotten to be able to kind of know, you know, what's working that day and what to junk for that day? Yeah. You know, I, I think a lot of that comes with experience, um, you know, being in the league for, for some time and, and learning, uh, l truly learning about, your arsenal, uh, how things work, where they work best, why they work best, um, stuff like that. So, you know, like, like I said earlier, the, you know, the two seam at sea level um, is something that I can lean pretty hard on uh, just because I know it's, it's going to be catching that, that thick air and have quality movement to it. You know, that still looks like a fastball, but it's, it's going to be moving arm side for me to throw hitters off. Um, you know, same goes with the rest of my arsenal. Uh, learning how different pitches move for me at different, you know, sea level, altitude, dry, whatever. You know, just just knowing where you're at, where you're pitching, and, and what's going to be working for you that day. And one more for me, Kyle. Uh, from a pitcher's perspective, uh, what do you see from Brendan Rodgers um, as a hitter? From speaking from a pitcher's perspective, he's dangerous. He he really is. Um, to see him healthy, playing consistently, um, doing his thing. He, I mean, he's he's locked in. His focus is there every single day. Um, I'm very happy to see him healthy and being able to play. You know, almost a full season. Obviously, he had that setback in spring training, as did I. Uh, but I mean, he's. I mean, he's popping right now. He, he's due to pop off, you know, continuously. He's, he's an extreme talent that we have, and he's a very dangerous hitter uh, that can, you know, hit for power, uh, hit for average, good speed, good defender. I mean, he's, he's got it all, and he's, uh, I think he's uh, starting to really realize that now um, with the consistency that he's shown at the big league level over the past, you know, five months or so since he's been healthy. It's, uh, it's very exciting to see. I'm, I'm very excited to see what kind of step he takes uh, next. And with one more for me on Brandon, with that relatively short swing, not a lot of moving parts, et cetera, I would imagine for a pitcher, when a guy doesn't have a lot of holes in his swing like that, that's, that's a challenge. Absolutely. Uh, when, they're, when they got a short, sweet swing um, and they're good at laying off, um, you know, some, some nasty pitches uh, and, and they stay where they feel they need to be locked into, that's where he is. Um, I mean, he's starting to sniff 300 on the season. He's got a bunch of home runs. He's, he's hitting balls in the gap. He's getting doubles. I mean, he's coming up clutch for us, which is, which is another thing that you can add to him is, uh, is that clutch gene. Um, so, uh, again, I'm excited to see the step forward that he takes uh, going into next year. Thanks, Kyle. Thomas? Kyle, yeah, if you can explain what, it's, what it was like in the sixth inning, you know, bases loaded there and you knew you wanted to get out of that with no runs but you knew you had to expend everything you had to get out of it yeah I mean that, that was kind of one of those innings that you know I, I looked up and kind of and saw my pitch count and I knew I, I knew I had pitches to work with 
Um, but then, you know, I got into that jam with bases loaded, you know, what was that three straight hits, two, three straight hits. Um, you know, kind of got to give credit to them uh, and their hitters. They, when the ball is in the zone, I noticed with Marquez last night and myself today, when the ball's in the zone, they, they put good wood on it. Um, but, you know, once in that jam, you know, you got to start being a little creative and start thinking of ways to get out of it. And, you know, myself and Diaz, I think we did a really good job of executing pitches where they needed to be um, in that sixth inning and being able to get out of it without any damage being done. It seemed today also that um, obviously if you got a pitch up, you, you you didn't like it when they got some hits, but there were some hits on some balls in that, you know, they were, they were on the ground the way you wanted them. And you seem to just keep your composure there. Is that kind of a skill for a pitcher? Just keep the composure saying, Hey, um, he hit the ball where a guy wasn't, but the next one I'm going to get two out. Yeah. I mean, if they, if we have a shift on or something like that and, and a hitter is able to, you know, punch a four hole on the backside or, or whatever, somehow beat a shift or find a hole. And you, you can't get mad at that. And that's baseball. They're, they're trying to do their job as much as I'm trying to do my job. Uh, you you got to move on from it and you got to, you know, then I started thinking, all right, how am I going to get this double play? How am I going to get this next guy out? Um, you, you got a lot of stuff flying through your head and you got to make sure that you're on top of what is, uh, what your priorities are at that point. Has this been a good place for you to pitch? I think um, you go back to 19 where you had been struggling. You come here, pitch very well against Corbin. Um, why is this a good place for you? I, I don't know. I, I think I've pitched here either two or three times. I know I pitched here in 19. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I might have pitched here in 17 or 18. But I don't I don't know. It's I honestly can't tell you if uh, – I like the mound. Hey, last one for me. Um, you guys, it's a big road trip for you guys, obviously. First winning road trip of the year. But what does this say about the team's resilience? Uh, the fact that for much of the year, you, you were here in the year on pace for some really ugly road history. But um, it looks like you guys are finishing pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely nice to have a winning road trip, even though it's September, uh, you know, that, that's something that's going to be talked about this offseason. It's going to be talked about in spring training next year for us, how it's going to be very key for us to win on the road as well as winning at home and continue that winning at home. Um, but, you know, winning on the road, you know, kind of playing upset with the Phillies in Atlanta, um, you know, really putting pressure on them and in, in, uh, in that division. And then, you know, coming here and continue that those winning ways for us. I think it's great, especially, you know, for these young guys that we're calling up for them to see and witness and be a part of and understand that winning on the road is not easy, especially when you're playing a team that is in a playoff hunt. Uh, it's, it's something that you need to be really locked into. And if you're able to get a series win or get a sweep, it, it's very big. It, it's a massive momentum shifter for, yourself and also the opposition. I'll go to Danielle. Hey, Tyler, we've asked you a lot this season what the mood is like after some of these um, bad road trips. What's the team feeling like right now? And what do you think has been the biggest adjustment on this road trip compared to past ones? I think right now, you know, with this winning road trip, we're, we're kind of riding the wave. We're, you know, seeing what kind of this feels like, you know, it took us all this time to, really put together a really quality road trip where we're going out, pitching is dominating, hitting is dominating. And, you know, we're, like I said, we're just kind of riding that wave and, and, you know, feeling those emotions as a team to understand, all right, this is, this is what it should be like. This is how we should be feeling when we're on the road. We should be going into opposing ballparks and, you know, and beating those guys. Uh, you know, we, we understand that we're, well, we should be a winning ball club and that we want to be a winning ball club.